name is Serena, and I'm going to be your interviewer for today. Can you tell me your name and how you prefer to be called? Um, my name is Sister Kwajimai. You can call me Kobi. Kobi, nice meeting you here. Thank you. Nice meeting you too. Okay, so this interview I hope will last for just 20 minutes, and I want you to feel relaxed okay. and tell me what you know about each of the questions I will be asking you. Okay, thank you. I'm hoping to do my very best. <laughs> yeah. Before we start, I would want to confirm your identity. I want to make sure you are the right candidate. Yeah, just it. So can you hold your identity card at eye level for me? Take it a bit further down. All right, great. We can now start, right? Yeah, I'm ready. Can you tell me more about yourself? Okay, so I'll say my name is Sister Kwajimai, a highly motivated, dedicated, and hardworking registered nurse trained in Ghana. I have an appreciable years of working experience, six years to be precise. And during this period, I have had opportunity to tap into various fields of nursing, talk of general medicine, general surgery, pediatrics, and I've also had a touch of mental health nursing. This has given me a deeper insight about managing patients in any of the aforementioned fields. I currently work at the accident and emergency unit of my facility. I like to indulge in research and I'm currently working on a project that looks into how nurses can use social media to promote health. Besides, I like to create content mostly health related on my social media platforms. This is what I can say about myself for now. Nice and interesting to know that. So why did you choose nursing among all profession? I remember some time back as a young boy, I felt really ill to the point that my parents knew I was going to pass away. They quickly took me to a nearby hospital only to be taken care of by a gentle, dedicated and soft-hearted young man who introduced himself as the nurse to be taking care of me. In fact, I liked the way he spoke to me. I liked the way he cared for me. I liked how he reassured me and my worried parents. I liked how he motivated me to take my medicine. I had not been long admitted, but because of this illness, I felt within me that I was getting better each passing minute. I could see my parents smile again, and as a young boy in an unfamiliar environment, I found safety in the hands of this nurse. Right from that moment, the male nurse's actions motivated me a lot. I felt that there was no profession that touches life than nursing. So I started learning towards it and here I am today. So for me, I would say I was inspired by a nurse who took good care of me. I wanted to reciprocate to others the same feeling I had with the nurse. Interesting. So do you know where this nurse is now? Do you keep in touch with him? Um, not at all. The last time I went back to where he used to work, I was told he was transferred to a different facility in a different region. So since then, we have not been in touch. Okay, bless him. So, if you are to talk about your strengths and weaknesses, what will you say about them? Well, there are a couple of things I can do best and some I can do but not to the very best. Talking about my strengths, Knowing myself for some time now, I would say one of my strengths is patience and resilience. Working with patients can be challenging and stressful. So for me, I have the patience and the ability to stay calm under pressure and emotionally charged situations. Also, I can boast of good communication skills. I have come to accept the terms that effective communication is crucial for every nurse to convey information to patients, families and other healthcare professionals clearly and accurately. And being a nurse for the past six years, I have learned this skill to the core. I'm also proud of the fact that I work closely with doctors, other nurses, and healthcare staff, requiring strong teamwork and collaboration skills to ensure comprehensive patient care. And turning my attention to my weakness is one of the things I am still trying to find my way around it is delegating tasks. Sometimes I find it challenging to delegate tasks to others, leading to an increased personal workload and then potential burnout. Also, I'm just trying to find a balance between professional responsibilities and personal life. And you know, for me, sometimes I feel it's challenging, especially with this irregular and the long working hours. It is quite interesting to hear all that. We will see how best 
We can help you overcome your weaknesses once you get the chance to join us. Thank you very much. I appreciate your kind wish. All right. My very last but one question for you. Let's say you went to your new patient's bedside to give her medication and she confides in you that she has been sexually abused. What will you do as a nurse? Working for the past six years as a nurse, I've had a couple of these situations and this is how I approached it. First of all, I took the opportunity to reassure and appreciate her for having the confidence to speak it out. I do this because most sexually abused individuals prefer to keep mute about it, thinking that if they voice it, they will be seen as immoral or something else. I then provided a safe and private space for her to talk if she wanted to. I reassured her that the department has an experienced safeguarding team to you know, look into her case and if she was able to express her concern, I would diligently document it so that the appropriate team can help her out of the situation. Once she was willing to talk, I listened without judgment, interrupting or pressing for details. I showed empathy and then validated her feelings, acknowledging the courage it took to speak up. I also reassured the patients that her disclosure would be kept confidential within the limits of the law and hospital policy. I explained that certain information may need to be shared with specific authority to ensure her safety and receive appropriate care. I accurately documented the patient's disclosure in her medical notes using their own words as much as possible and later referred her to the safeguarding team to look into her case. This is the same thing I would have done in this situation. That is lovely. At least you know most of the stuff you have to do to help a sexually abused patient. But one thing I will want to add is that don't forget to write a Dadix about it. It is also very necessary. Okay, thank you very much. I'll put that into my notes. I really appreciate it. Excellent. What will you do if you realize that you have made a medication error? Okay, so for me, I hold the notion that so far as nurses continue to be human beings, medication levels cannot be fully eradicated. However, I think the measures to put in place when medication errors occur matter. So in such a situation, I will make the patient and their family aware and reassure them that the necessary measures are in place to make sure that no serious harm is caused. I will then inform the appropriate medical team about the situation including the doctor and the my line manager. I will document and write an incident report about it. I will continue to closely monitor the patients for any delayed or ongoing effects of the medication error. This may include checking vital signs, symptoms and any other relevant indicators of the patient's condition. I will really reflect on the circumstances that led to the medication error to understand what went wrong and how similar errors can be prevented in the future. This may involve maybe, you know, reviewing the procedure I used or seeking additional training. That is amazing, Kabi. Well done. Thank you. At this point, do you have any question you would want to ask me before we end this interview session? Um, yeah, I have two specific questions I would like to ask if that's okay. Yeah, feel free to ask. Go ahead with your questions. All right. My very first question is, what measures do your trust have in place to help new overseas nurses like me with continuous learning and development? So I must say that there are a lot of things in place for you to first of all fit in, since we know you are coming from overseas and we know most of the policies, plan and protocols may be so different to you. You start with an induction and preceptorship programs to know more about our trust and the, the department you will be working. There are also set study days and training, which may all count towards your CPD, continuous professional development. You may also have the chance to partake in external refresher courses, which you may be sponsored. Yeah. So we have concrete plan to help your development. Good to hear. Thank you. Um, my last question is, as an overseeing nurse, if I'm given the opportunity to join your reputable trust, what can I do to also uplift the good image of the trust? As a notable trust in England, we have missions, vision and core values we share, and we hope that all members come together to push the mission and vision and portray our core values. So being caring and empathic to your patients, respecting your seniors and learning from them, 
can pave way for you. And you know, when patients are satisfied with the care you give them, they go out there and speak well of you as well as the trust. You will be giving a handbook so you know what the missions, visions, and values of the trust are. Okay, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. All right. If there are no further questions, we will end this session. Thank you, Kabi. It was nice meeting you. You will hear from us on Monday. Have a lovely weekend. Bye. Nice meeting you too. Thank you. Bye.